In the red corner, we have the 7-9% rate of return, not factoring inflation, the undisputed champion of the world, the stock market. And in the blue corner, a guaranteed rate of return of 5%, the challenger, bonds. Fight. Fatality. I should be a voice actor. That was way too dramatic, but also it kind of has to be sometimes because finance is boring and I don't have cool cars to review or phones to look at. I just have numbers and that will make anyone go insane. And for me, it's uh, too late. So a lot of exciting things are happening in the markets, which is why today I want to figure out which is better to invest in in 2023, stocks or bonds. I just saw an article recently on Barron's.com that said that bonds are now a better deal than stocks. And that's a pretty bold statement, considering that the stock market has been the undisputed champion for over a century now, and bonds by comparison have been lagging behind the stock market. And sure, the traditional piece of advice is to own a little bit of both and to diversify, but could it be that sometimes throughout history, it's better to invest in bonds. And as someone who doesn't have any bonds in my investment portfolio because my money is split between VTI, which is an ETF stock that's a basket of the entire US stock market and my favorite dividend stocks, which right now are paying me 2.26% per year, I'm also risking my money in the stock market to get that 2.26% when I could instead not risk my money with this one trick they don't want you to know. Now, with something called money market funds, which is something I've never talked about before on my channel. So in today's video, let me give you a quick update on the central bank, the Fed interest rates, inflation, and then we'll get into the fun stuff of stocks versus bonds. So let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the epic battle of the century, rap style. So, uh, listen up, let me drop some rhymes about stocks and bonds, two ways to make dimes. Stocks, you might win big or you might fall. It's a gamble of risk or nothing at all. Bonds, they're not quite the same. Steady interest rates, but a lot more tame. So two ways to invest and both can bring gains. Which one is best? That's what we'll find out, so let's start the test. Boom, mic drop. Thank you, ChatGPT, for that incredibly cringy, but also Oscar-worthy rap script. Now, according to Bank of America, they just recently reported that there was $5.5 billion worldwide that investors put into bond funds. Now, this was for seven straight weeks in a row that the bond market got more money put into it than money that was left out of it. Now, out of that $5.5 billion, 700 million was put into government bonds or good old T-bills. By comparison though, the stock market got only $300 million. Now, there was actually a net outflow out of the stock market, meaning more money left the stock market than was put into it for two weeks in a row now. And the question is, why did that happen? Beats me, the end. See you in the next one. It happened because of what's called the FOMC Minutes Meeting, which is where the Illuminati essentially get together to discuss future interest rate plans. And just like the market predicted, there was an 80% chance that the Fed would raise rates by a quarter percent, that is exactly what they did. Now, all of this happened a couple weeks ago, so it's not news. What is news though, is just recently the public found out what was talked about inside of that super secret meeting. And what we've learned is that inflation is still too high because it is above their target rate of 2%. There are far more jobs than there are workers, which helps inflation to stay high and that the Fed would fight this inflation by continuing to increase their interest rates. Now, whenever the market and investors hear this news, they don't like it because the market does not like high inflation and it does not like it when interest rates go up. But as we've hopefully learned before, whenever the Fed increases their federal funds rate, not only does the cost for borrowing money go up, but also the yield on fixed income assets like bonds. And if this was a hypothetical fight between stocks and bonds, Bonds are winning right now by a lot. So let me just show you. So let's compare stocks to bonds as they stand today. Now, there are thousands of stocks and thousands of bonds. So I'm going to simplify it and use one to represent the entire stock market, which is VOO, widely considered to be the stock market or the S&P 500. So whenever you hear that, it's the same thing. And then for bonds, I'm going to use an ETF called BND, which is going to be our basket of bonds that represents the entire bond market. So let's take a look at the stock market first, VOO. So, so far you can see the year to date on VOO is 4.89%, so almost 5%. So how does that compare to BND? So if we load up BND, we can see that the year to date is only 0.08%. So basically zero, it's flat. It looks like stocks are clearly doing better this year, but that's not the full picture 
because we also have to take into account their yields because some investments pay us an interest rate for just holding on to them, right? So BND right now, for example, is paying an interest rate of 4.15%. Now that's not bad compared to the stock market because this is a guaranteed rate of return. But according to Vanguard, most people who buy into BND, they wanna invest their money between four to 10 years to get that fixed income. But let's instead assume that you need money maybe shorter term, right? You want more flexibility to access that money quicker. So let's instead take a look at the 30-day treasury bond, which right now is paying closer to 4.6% for its 30-day yield. Hold on a minute, Andre. Couldn't I just buy this 30-day treasury bond every month and make 4.6% every 30 days? I could beat the stock market with that. No, that's not how it works. If you made 4.6%, that would be insane. That's like a 50% annual return rate. And if anyone ever promises you 50% returns every year, run in the other direction. The only way that would ever make sense is if they're a crypto company or maybe a criminal, or in today's world, probably both. Now hear me out. So just remember, the next time you see the yield on a stock or a bond, it is usually an annualized number. Now here's something useful. Here's how you can figure out exactly how much money you would make by buying one of these 30-day treasury bonds, holding it for one month and collecting the interest. Here's the math. You would take how much money you're investing, so let's say $1,000, multiply it by the annual yield, 4.6% in this case, or 0.046, because you have to convert it to decimals, that's $46, that's per year. And also it's not perfect math because I'm not taking into account monthly compounding, but for the sake of simplicity, let's say $46, but that's in one year. We're only gonna hold it for one month. So you could take that final $46 and divide it by 52, because there's 52 weeks in a year, and then multiplying it by four because four weeks in one month. We're only gonna hold it for one month. The total is $3.54. That is how much you would make by investing $1,000 into today's 30-day treasury bond that yields 4.6% and other useless facts you'll learn on my channel. Now, if you wanna lock up your money for even longer, you can make even more money. Like for example, the one-year treasury bond right now is paying 5%, and that's really impressive because if you compare that to the stock market, in a good year, the stock market would make between seven to 9%, but that's not a guarantee. The bond market, especially with treasury bonds, are a guarantee pretty much if you can hold those bonds to their full maturity. Now, here's the question. Would you rather risk it for the biscuit in the stock market where you might be able to make an extra two to 3% or maybe lose all your money, or would you rather take the guaranteed path with bonds where you can make 5% without risking your money? And maybe as I asked you that, you were thinking, of course I would rather take the guaranteed path, and that's exactly what the data shows from Bank of America because investors are choosing to go with bonds instead. But throughout making this video, I actually learned there's a more scientific way to answer that question about which one is better, stocks or bonds, and here's how. The general rule of thumb is that the stock market is better valued than bonds when the stock market's earnings yield is three to 4% higher than the yield of the 10-year treasury bond. I realize that probably made no sense, so let me break it down. So to find out what the earnings yield for the stock market is, all you have to do is load up VOO, the stock market, look at the PE ratio and inverse it. Now, I know that sounds confusing, but in Robinhood, for example, you can find this information, that's the PE ratio, or you can just type into Google, what is the forward PE ratio of the stock market? Now, the closest information that I was able to find for the stock market today is roughly 21. Now, the earnings yield is not the PE ratio. The PE ratio is P slash E. The earnings yield is the reverse of PE. It's E slash P. I know, sounds confusing, but it's actually really easy. So what is the inverse or opposite of 21? It's not 12. Instead, it's one, the number one, divided by whatever that PE ratio is. So in this case, 21. One divided by 21 is 4.76%. That is the forward earnings yield of the stock market, which we can just round up to 5% for easy math. Now the rule says we have to compare that number we just got for stocks, which was 5%, to the interest rate of the 10-year treasury bond. And when I Google that number, it is closer to 4% for simple math. So 5% for stocks and 4% for bonds. Now the rule says that in order for stocks to be considered the better buy over bonds, 
their forward earnings yield would have to be closer to 7 to 8% instead of the 5% it's at right now. Now, in order for that to be true, that forward PE ratio number we looked up together, that 21 number, would have to be in the realm of 12 to 14 instead of 21 that it's at right now. So basically what it means is the stock market would have to come way down for it to make more sense to buy stocks when bonds are as juicy as they are. That's the mathematical way to figure out the answer to that question. Now, looking at all of this, there's still sort of a problem for me because I have quite a bit of cash in my bank account that I don't want to just have invested. And I also don't want to buy a one-year treasury bond or a six-month bond or a one-month treasury bond because that feels like it locks up my money for too long. I want access to my money way faster than one month in case I need to pay taxes or there's an opportunity or something comes along that I need my money faster than a month. And so the more I started to look into this situation, I actually found something that addresses my concern and those are something called money market fund accounts. Money market funds are sort of like if savings slash checking accounts had a baby with high yield treasury bonds. They solve the problem of locking your money up for a long period of time as they might with a 30-day treasury bond because you could have your money out of the money market account as quickly as one week and right now it's yielding upwards of 4.5%, meaning your excess cash in your savings accounts could just be earning you interest, but if you need access to it, you could pull it out as quickly as one week. And what's nice is that those accounts are federally insured they can have checks and even debit cards linked to those accounts. And the return on those accounts is almost 100% guaranteed. It's not quite 100%, but it's as safe as anything can get in the world of investing. But like everything else, money market funds are not perfect. They're not really meant for long-term investment growth like the stock market. Instead, it's just a relatively safe place to park your excess cash. And if you need access to it, you can do that pretty quickly. I don't have a money market fund account myself. I'd like to get one but I'm not sure which one yet, but here's how they work. I looked at a couple. One of them is from Vanguard called VMFXX, which is a 4.5% seven day yield. There's a minimum requirement of $3,000. And the way this account is paying you that yield is that money is invested into government bonds and other government securities that are boring and relatively stable and don't fluctuate much in value. Now, there's another one from Charles Schwab that's called Snacks. It has a minimum of $1 million investment, but it's paying 4.6%, which of course is gonna be outside of most people's budget. So they have a $0 minimum that is paying 4.47% or close to 4.5, pretty much the same as the $1 million option. And this fund also invests into things like CDs and asset-backed commercial papers. Also, boring stuff that doesn't really fluctuate much in value. So basically these money market funds have the power of bonds and they combine the flexibility of checking accounts with the downside of having a respawn delay of about one week to your money. So back to the OG question, right now, which one is better, stocks or bonds? The answer is that it depends on a lot of things like your age, your goal, how long you plan on investing for, and the answer is only something you will know. Personally, I think bonds are a great place to park your cash for the short term that you don't want invested. But personally, I will continue to invest the majority of my money in the stock market. But also, my opinion doesn't matter. In the meantime, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below and then go track them automatically with a spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon, bye-bye.